Number one, Jake Paul and Nate Diaz will be squaring off August the 5th, this Saturday night, at the American Airlines Center in Dallas. Um, huge fight. Definitely a moneymaker. The payouts, sports payouts reported that Paul could earn up to $2 million, while Diaz could earn a guaranteed purse of $500,000. Now, that's without, you know, uh, pay-per-view points, so on, so on. Now, listen to this. More than 20,000 people pre-registered for access to buy tickets, right? Ridiculous. The, the whole venue fits about 20,000 people. And then let's, as we go deeper, Diaz got offered $10 million to fight Paul in an MMA bout following their clash, right? This here is a, a master move within itself because that fight would fall under the PFL, which is the competitor, a competitor with the UFC. Um, the PFL also signed Francis Ngannou recently and set huge headlines and helped Francis get his fight with Tyson Fury. So Diaz is a free agent. He can fight wherever he wants. This is going to be an option. There's huge money for him to be made here. But now let's not move away from this fight here. Now, Jake Paul is an internet sensation. 20 million subscribers on YouTube. Tens of millions of subscribers on, on other social networks. This fight's going to be televised on the zone, pay-per-view around the globe. What a fight, Tony. Well, you've just basically taken all of my information, Ahmed. But uh, <laughs> to elaborate on what you've just uh, told everybody, the numbers are amazing. I'm actually surprised that Jake Paul would only get two million dollars to fight, and Nate Diaz five hundred thousand. Now, for those who who are unaware, Jake Paul is the YouTube sensation who is going to fight, as you said, Nate Diaz this weekend in Dallas. And it's going to be for his eighth fight. He's six and one. Nate Diaz is without a fight. He is a UFC star. This is going to be his first event in a boxing ring, and it's going to be huge. So, we're, as you said, talking about ticket prices, they started from fifty-five dollars in the nosebleeds, and then would go all the way up to a thousand dollars US, which would obviously be probably down on the floor and close to the ring. But we must say to all the listeners and viewers out there that already on SeatGeek, which is a resale outlet, they're as high as $7,400 US for one ticket. Wow. So the, the interest around this fight is enormous. So whoever is marketing this is an absolute genius because these two will fight in a boxing ring. And as you so eloquently said, they will then do a rematch in a UFC octagon. Now, this is brilliant because you will fight in Jake Paul's familiarity, being the, the four walls of a boxing ring, and then go into Nate Diaz's home, for whatever word, and then Jake Paul will have to then um, fight Diaz at his preferred um, Sport. martial arts. Yeah. It's, it's huge. So it, they've taken away from Vegas. They've gone into Dallas, as you said, at the American Airlines Center. I think it's going to be a massive fight, and I think the numbers will be huge. I know we spoke earlier about um, Spence versus Crawford, which took place in Las Vegas last week, but this is more of an entertainment. I know it's, it's going to be full on boxing, but as we know, Jake Paul, who fought Mayweather in the past, um, made millions. No, that, that was his brother, Logan. Yeah. Sorry? Logan for uh, Mayweather. Oh, sorry, Logan. Yeah. Ja Jake for uh, Woodley, the former U UFC champ, and Askren, and he fought Anderson Silva, and he beat them, and then he lost to Tommy Tommy Fury, which is the brother of Tyson Fury. Yes. So, sorry, apologies. Yeah. So yeah. the numbers by itself are absolutely enormous. Jake Paul has 20.4 million YouTube subscribers. Nate Diaz... 336,000. Now, I mean, Jake Paul is an internet sensation. And for Nate Diaz to have 336,000 subscribers on YouTube is nothing to scoff at. They are big numbers. And I think the marketing people behind this have um, have been genius. Absolutely. So 
the key here is not the purses. The purse is only what they have to declare to the sanctioning body, right? So what happens is most of the, the money is going to be made from the pay-per-view points. The goal here with going with the zone, that's a, a global network now, the goal here is to get the 1 million plus pay-per-views. That's when they're all going to make a lot of money. Now, this will be a record-breaking purse or earning for Nate Diaz if it passes the 1 million mark. Now, just so, just for context, the zone, for those of you that haven't heard of it, is no small, is no small network. It's backed by a, a huge billionaire. It just signed the rights to the NFL uh, international pass, the NFL pass now on a global level. So they definitely have the distribution, they have the reach, and this could well and truly go past the million pay per view buys. And if it does, it's going to make Nate Diaz and Jake, and Jake Paul a lot of money. And for those who um, want to log on, I think this is only for the Americans for DAZN, D-A-Z-N, which would we see on the microphone being used by the commentators. Uh, for existing subscribers, it'll be a $19.99 purchase. And for new subscribers, it'll be $39.99. But Armit, tell all the listeners and the viewers where they can watch it for, for instance, in the UK or Australia or the Philippines. The zone. The zone also is in those markets. So you, you can also watch it in those markets. And as of late, I heard ESPN has also jumped on as a, as, as a partner. So it's um, the reach is there. The distribution is there. This is going to be an absolute spectacle. So what do you think the numbers could be in terms of generating... Not only, I mean, we, we think it's probably going to be a sellout on Saturday the, night in Dallas. The, the arena will be a sellout, for, like that's 100%. So in terms of what can each fighter look to make from this fight alone? Well, if you look at the numbers, a million at, at 39.99, let's say. Let's say even at 20, right? Let's go at the 20. That's $20 million there, right? Million. That's from pay-per-view alone, right? So if that's sponsors, so on and so on. I reckon Nate Diaz can walk away because they usually stack the top of these cards and the rest of the fighters, they don't really get too, too much. Um, I reckon Nate Diaz can walk away with about four or five million. And I reckon Jake will walk away with about 10, 15. Wow. So and just for comparison's sake, Nate Diaz is 38 and Jake Paul is 26. Yeah, but... Nate Diaz made his name recently against Connor in 2016, where uh, Jake Paul has made his name on on the internet. So he's got subscribers all over the world. Where Nate's only known in the fighting world, and he's become a bit a bit more mainstream as of late. But Jake Paul's got definitely the larger following. Well, and YouTube has become a force within itself. And I know you and I spoke off camera earlier. In terms of they got deals with the NBA and the NFL, they are enormous. Absolutely, YouTube TV bought the Sunday ticket from the NFL, and they pay their they they're paying two and a half billion dollars annually for for that. Now, for those that follow, people know that the Sunday ticket is a very very popular um, segment. I would call it. Broadcast? Uh, yeah, yeah, broadcast. And pretty much what they've also done is that they're going to allow people to reuse the content to create shorts on YouTube. So they're finding innovative ways to really make the most of this content and have people engage with it. So YouTube's definitely um, all over sport at the moment. They're looking at getting more involved from, from what I understand. And they're definitely the future and we'll, and we'll and we'll talk about this more in in one of our upcoming talking points in this in this in this episode yeah just uh, one by extension and both for all the listeners out there both you and i are based in australia do you wonder why the afl didn't do a similar deal with youtube <laughs> um australia is a few years behind the us 
I'd say, so the way I look at the Australian market is I judge it based on the four-year political cycle. Political trends in Australia happen four years after they happen in, in, in the United States. 